Hello Matrix and welcome to the second of 10 videos for Grade 12 Functions brought to you by the Answer Series. This second video reminds you how to rewrite a parabola in a different form, how to find the equations of various functions and how to find the equations of the axes of symmetry of a hyperbola. What we are going to do is we are going to write a parabola in the form y equals a bracket x minus p all squared plus q. So we take the equation y equals x squared minus 3x plus 6. We take the coefficient of x which is minus 3. We halve it and square that. I get 9 over 4. So what I do is I add 9 over 4 and I subtract 9 over 4. Now that equation is exactly the same as the equation I've given above. Why we do it is because the first three terms form a perfect square and then I combine the last two terms. Now this is an extremely useful form to get the parabola into because it is the turning point form. So I can immediately get the turning point of the parabola the x value at the turning point is 3 over 2 and the y value is 15 over 4. In the second example you will notice that x squared has a coefficient of minus 2. So the first thing I do is I take out the minus 2 and I'm left with x squared plus 6x plus 7. Again I take the coefficient of x which is 6, I halve it and I square. 6 over 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So I add 9 to my equation and subtract 9 from the equation. The first three terms form a perfect square and then I combine the last two terms. All that remains is for me to multiply the minus 2 back into the bracket and I get y equals minus 2 bracket x plus 3 all squared plus 4. Now we're going to take y equals 3x squared minus 5x plus 6 and I want you to try and do this. So pause the video, you try it and then we'll do it together. The first thing to do is realize that x squared has a coefficient. So you take out the 3. I then take the coefficient of x, which is minus 5 over 3. I halve it and I square my answer. I get 25 over 36. So I add 25 over 36 and I subtract 25 over 36. The first three terms give me a perfect square and I collect the last two terms together. I then multiply the 3 into the bracket and there I have rewritten the parabola in a different form. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to find the equations of various functions. So I've given you four functions which I want you to try and find the equations of. So pause the video, you try them and then we'll do it together. In this example you have x-intercepts of minus 1 and 5 so they come from the brackets x plus 1 x minus 5 and I put an a in front. I have a point that lies on the parabola 4 5 so I substitute 4 5 I solve for a and get a is minus 1 which goes in front of the brackets and there's the equation of my parabola. With the second one I've given you the turning point so what I do is I substitute 2 minus 1 into the turning point form 
of the parabola. You've been given the y-intercept that has the coordinate 0, 7, so I substitute 0, 7 in and I solve for a. So there's the equation of my parabola. With a hyperbola, you have an asymptote of y equals 1, so I have a plus 1 on the end of my equation. You have a second asymptote of x equals minus 2, which means under my fraction goes x plus 2. The graph passes through the origin, which is the point 0, 0. So I substitute 0, 0 in, and I solve for a, and there's the equation of my hyperbola. In the last example, the exponential, I have an asymptote of y equals 2, so I have a plus 2 on the end of my equation. The graph passes through the origin, which has a coordinate of 0, 0, so I substitute 0, 0 in, and I solve for a. I use that value of a, and then realize that it goes through the point 1 minus 2. So I substitute 1 minus 2 and I solve for b and there's the equation of my exponential. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to find the equations of the axes of symmetry of a hyperbola. A hyperbola has two axes of symmetry. In this example this one does not cut the hyperbola and in this example this one does cut the hyperbola. The gradient of the first one is 1 so the equation is y equals x plus c. The gradient of the second one is minus 1 so the equation is y equals minus x plus c. Both of them pass through the point of intersection of the axes of symmetry. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video, try to find the equations of those two axes of symmetry, and then we will do it together. So the first one has the equation y equals x plus c. It passes through the point minus 2, 1. So I substitute minus 2, 1, get my value of c, which gives me the equation of that axis of symmetry. For the second one, again, I substitute minus 2, 1, get the value of c, and get the other equation. You should now understand these concepts. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.